Hey guys, welcome to episode 6 of Premium Beats Resolve Editing Crash Course. Today we're going to look at some of the settings that we glossed over throughout the other episodes. As I have repeatedly mentioned throughout each lesson, we really wanted to lay down the fundamentals of editing for new users and leave out the difficult and tedious bits that slow down the learning process. After all, how many tutorials have you watched where you just wanted to get into it? That said, there are a few elements that I want to cover regarding the settings before leaving this basic series. Don't worry though, we're not going to dive headfirst into technical jargon and advanced settings, we're just going to cover some of the settings that new editors might want to check out. In Resolve, there are two setting menus, the System Preferences and the Project Settings. First, let's look at the System Preferences, which you can find by clicking DaVinci Resolve and then Preferences. So this is the Preferences menu. Both the system and the user is kind of like adjusting the engine, the internal properties of how the software interacts with the hardware. Let's have a look at a few settings you might need to change when first loading up Resolve. The very first window is the Memory and GPU panel. And in here, you can limit how much RAM Resolve uses, or in other words, you can give the software more fuel to burn faster. Now, the more you allocate to Resolve, the less there is for other processes. And in turn, that may make things worse for your system, even though you've given Resolve more memory. However, if you find that Resolve is behaving sluggishly, have a look if you can increase more memory in this panel. Even though I have 16 gigabyte installed, I can only use up to 75%. Uh, I often switch between using my monitors and headphones and sometimes, if open, when changing the system volume, Resolve can get confused. If that's ever the case, head into the video and audio I.O. and here you can configure where you want your audio to output. Alternatively, if you want to keep your volume settings for your system as they are but you want Resolve to output through your headphones, then what you can do is use this panel to change it from the system default to your headset. And on a basic level, I think these are the only two system preferences we really need to cover. With that, let's have a look at a few project settings. So if the system preferences affect the hardware, the project settings will affect the project and software, such as the resolution and frame rate. To get here, you need to go to the bottom right and we have a cog icon. And when you click that, you will be greeted with a project settings pop-up window. Let's first look at the timeline resolution because this can sometimes catch people out. As mentioned in episode three, your timeline resolution is set by yourself when creating a project, when creating a timeline, or when first importing a clip which mismatches with the default settings and Resolve will ask you if you want to change resolution settings. If, theoretically, you then get told while editing you no longer need to be working in a 4K timeline and you want to switch to 1080 then to take advantage of cropping some of the 4K footage and recomposing, you would open the project settings and switch the timeline to 1080. However, look what happens when we do this. The 4K footage has remained the same scale. Now if you think if we were to insert a 4K file onto a 1080p timeline, then realistically, we would have to decrease the scale of the 4K file to fit into the viewer completely, right? Well, with Resolve, it has an image scaling process which will change how your footage interacts with a timeline that has a different resolution. To adjust these properties, we need to drop down one panel to image scaling and here you will find an input scaling option which controls the resolution of mismatched media. At default, it says scale entire image to fit, which is what happened to our footage. However, we can change that to center crop with no resizing. And upon doing so, the image in the timeline has resorted to its recorded resolution. There may be a time when I'm working with 4K and you switch to a 1080 timeline and you want the majority of the clips to decrease in scale with the timeline settings, but a few remain at the default size, so you can then go in and crop and zoom and so forth. Well, obviously, changing the entire timeline property is going to be cumbersome if you only want to change the resolution of a few clips. So instead, after changing the timeline resolution, close the settings panel, select the 4K clip that you want to remain at the default size, open the inspector, scroll down until you find the scaling section, here, instead of the project settings, we can change it to crop, which will then override the 1080p timeline setting. With that covered, let's have a look at one final setting that may help you if you feel like playback is sluggish. Now, there's no denying that Resolve needs a somewhat powerful machine to use efficiently. 
Even my computer, which is reasonably well kitted out, struggles with high resolution files with a significant data rate. There are two things that we can do to lighten the load. We can go to playback, proxy mode, and then lower the resolution of the playback. You can see the drastic decrease in quality when I switch playback to a quarter resolution. And it's important to remember that when doing this, you're not doing anything to the clip or the timeline. It's just a playback setting. However, as you can see, this isn't ideal if we're editing footage that requires close analysis of the details in the shot. Everything is blurred, we can't really see close up. So what we can do is generate optimized media. To do this, you right click on a clip and select generate optimized media. Resolve will then create a proxy file at a lower resolution and format to allow real time playback. You then need to select use optimized media if available, but what resolution and format have you generated? Well, let's head back to the project settings, master settings, and then scroll down until you reach optimized media and render cache. Here you can choose what resolution and format you want these files to be written as. I would argue that for a new user to resolve, these are primarily the main settings you need to be aware of. Now, of course, we have only skimmed the surface in this mini series. There's so much to be taught about with this software, but as with most things, you primarily learn by running into an obstacle, searching for a solution and implementing the fix. I've mentioned this in every episode, but on the Premium Beat blog, we really do have a ton of answers for a variety of different problems. So if after watching this mini series, you think, okay, I am gonna start using Resolve. You can find a lot more technical and advanced solutions and tips on the blog. We hope if you're entirely new to editing Resolve that after this crash course, you'll have a good basic understanding on how to edit with the software. Until next time.